Hi everyone, flat earthers, flurfs, flatties, whatever you call them, like all pseudoscience spewing morons, they're fond of repeating the same claims over and over and over again, no matter how many times they're debunked. Hence this series, Flurf Pratt, flat earth points refuted a thousand times. To make sure you don't miss anything, subscribe and hit the bell. This time what I want to address is the standard response when someone calls Flat Earthers stupid. Namely, What? We're stupid? You're the one who blindly accepts what you're being told? How is it stupid to question things? Well, in order to address this, first let me point out that any scientifically minded person thinks that questioning things is good. As a science educator myself, I always encourage my students to ask questions. And I even point out that the more stupid they think a question is, the more important it is that they ask it, so that they can learn something and stop feeling stupid. Unfortunately, the Earth being round is such a basic thing that how we know it is this way simply isn't covered in high school. It's one of those things students are taught before they learn to question, and I think that's a legitimate thing for flurfs to complain about. Most people simply don't know how we know this. It's just something we accept. If this applies to you, feel free to check out the first part of this series. But when you have two hours a week to get through a packed physics curriculum, it's hard to devote time to things that aren't actually covered by the curriculum. However, at higher levels, when those two hours a week become eight hours a day, things are covered in much greater depth. This is why those who didn't choose to devote years of their lives to studying a topic at that level may unfortunately have no choice but to listen to those of us who did. We know the Earth is round and we can explain how we know. Please ask us! You are not stupid because you ask a so-called stupid question. The problem here is that flurfs ask these so-called stupid questions not so that they can learn, but so they can reject the answers. If the Earth is round, how come people don't fall off it? And how come the horizon looks flat are not bad questions to ask when they are asked honestly. But when your response to gravity and because you're seeing such a small part of the planet is See, this NASA shill is giving the standard excuses he's been taught to recite. Then what you are doing is not questioning or challenging. You're blindly rejecting. Next, let me explain what I mean by stupid. I've been accused of being ableist because I use the term so often. I think it's time to respond to that. What is stupidity? Is it intellectual impairment, mental disability, low IQ? We can joke about that, but really this isn't what I think anyone really means. Those jokes can be considered ableist, I, I suppose I can agree with that, that's a fair point. But when I say that a flurf is stupid, I don't mean to imply that he's legitimately mentally disabled, that he has some diagnosable condition, and I don't mean to insult those who do. I mean that he consistently engages in stupid behavior. So what constitutes stupid behavior? Well, we've all done stupid things. For example, you're pressed for time, you have to get somewhere, you know the usual route is packed this time of day. You could take a detour, which you feel confident would be faster because it'll have much less traffic, but you take the usual route anyway. After you arrive late, you think, damn, that was stupid. You have an important bill that absolutely must be paid on time to avoid a really nasty late fee. So to ensure you remember to pay it, you put it in a special place where you feel confident you'll remember it. It's right next to your keyboard. You'll see it every time you're at your computer. Of course, when you pay your bills that month, you take the usual pile, go through it as usual, and completely forget about that important one because it wasn't in the pile. Why didn't you just put it in the usual pile and avoid that late fee? Damn, that was stupid! The light's changing! Uh, I'm not gonna make it. Not gonna make it. Not gonna make it. Oh, maybe. Ah, f it. Didn't make it. Oh. Damn, that was stupid! We've all done things that gave us that. Damn, that was stupid! 
feeling. I'm sure you recognize the type of behavior I'm talking about. A stupid person does these things consistently, at least within some particular context. What makes these examples of stupid behavior is that we can't really explain why we behaved the way we did. It was stupid. We understood that what we were doing was not in our best interest, but we made a conscious choice to do it anyway. In Understanding Stupidity, psychologist James F. Wells defines stupidity in a way that may or may not have gained traction within the field, I wouldn't know, but it perfectly captures exactly what I mean. Quote, the term may be used to designate a mentality which is considered to be informed, deliberate, and maladaptive, unquote. Where maladaptive means it, quote, is in the worst interest of the actor and specifically done to prevent adaption to new data or existing circumstances, unquote. Stupidity, unlike ignorance, is informed. That is, if you didn't know that the usual route would be packed and you arrive late because you took the usual route, then you can blame it on traffic. It's only stupid because you knew that route would be packed. Unlike mental impairment, stupidity is deliberate. If you are extremely disorganized due to some diagnosable condition, and that's why you misplace your bill and forget to pay it and get a late fee, that's not stupidity. So are flurfs stupid? Yes, absolutely. They know that they don't have a good grasp of even elementary school science. They know that those who do, up to and including actual experts with fancy degrees and people like pilots who use their knowledge of the shape of the Earth for practical purposes in their daily jobs, are all convinced that the Earth is round. They have easy access to the information scientists have acquired and can easily ask questions when they don't understand something. Yet, they choose to blindly reject all of that in favor of maintaining their delusion that they live on a flat disk and that virtually everyone in the entire world is conspiring to hide this from them. Again, it's not that they're questioning, it's that they're blindly rejecting. Any answer given is just the excuse you've been taught to recite and is rejected without consideration. This is definitely an informed and deliberate mindset. So is it maladaptive? Well, it can be argued that to a lot of people, being wrong about the shape of the earth won't matter. But the belief that all authorities, the educational system and academia are all conspiring to hide something like this definitely matters. By inventing problems, they take their minds off real problems, which they claim are only false distractions made up by them to keep people from discovering the truth. Of course, this is in the worst interest of the actor. It also contributes to creating a world where things that are well established may become controversial and divisive topics for no good reason. Evolution is not a controversial topic within the scientific community, but there are school boards who think it is and refuse to touch it, leading to a generation of kids who won't study biology at a post-high school level. Next thing you know, there are so many flurfs around that the shape of the earth is purposely avoided in schools because it might offend someone. Better avoid anything related as well. So take physics and math out of the curriculum and say goodbye to not just physicists and mathematicians, but to the engineers who apply physics and math in practice and are absolutely essential to the functioning of modern society. Science denial has a dumbing down effect on society. Idiocracy, anyone? Or how about the Warhammer 40k universe, where ancient pieces of technology can no longer be built or even repaired and are treated like magical relics? Again, this is obviously in the worst interest of the actor and everyone else. Is it specifically done to prevent adaption to new data or existing circumstances? Yes, absolutely. They don't want to listen precisely because if they listened, they might hear. They are wrong, they know they're wrong, and they want to be wrong. If they didn't want to be wrong, they would engage with us with an honest desire to learn, not a dishonest desire to blindly reject the lies of the establishment, referring to truths they themselves can easily both understand and verify. So yes, the flurf mindset is informed, it's deliberate, 
and it's maladaptive. Flurfs are stupid. And no, they're not stupid because they ask questions. They're stupid because they ask questions only so that they can reject the answers. See ya.